ahead building and drilling in the U.S. and getting into pole position. An explanation later in the show. Welcome to Three Times Square this Monday from Reuters World Headquarters in New York. More signs of improvement in the housing market, a strong quarter for the top home builder in the U.S., D.R. Horton. The company's fourth quarter earnings nearly tripling on a 21 percent rise in sales. It also ended the fiscal year with its biggest backlog of orders since 2007. Shares closing in on their 52-week high of 2279 reached in September. From a stronger housing market to an even stronger energy sector, at least according to one forecast. Our Nigel Stevenson joins us from London, where the International Energy Agency released its latest forecast. Nigel, quite a surprise from them. Uh, you could say that. Very good morning to you. You might be as surprised as I was at this news from the International Energy Agency. In its World Energy Outlook, it says that the United States will overtake Saudi Arabia as the world's biggest oil producer by 2017 and soon be able to achieve the unthinkable of being energy self-sufficient, possibly by 2035. Now, all of this is largely thanks to the shale oil boom in the United States, which will produce 10 million barrels per day by 2015. And this will also accelerate a switch in the direction of the international national oil trade as by 2035 almost 90 percent of Middle East production will be going to Asia. Similarly, according to the International Energy Agency, the U.S. will also overtake world number one Russia as the world's biggest gas producer in 2015. Finally, a bit of shameless self-promotion. Watch my interview with the IEA Executive Director Maria van der Herven on Reuters right now. Lisa? We'll be watching. Nothing wrong with shameless <laughs> self-promotion. Thanks, <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> No burning of the midnight oil in the boardroom of the New York Times, the paper sticking with Mark Thompson as its new CEO. He takes over the job today. Thompson comes from the BBC, which is involved in an intensifying scandal that has raised questions about his tenure there. His replacement at the BBC, George Entwistle, resigned over the weekend. Shares the New York Times trading in the middle of their 2012 range. From the UK to LA and our power player of the day, the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. No, it's not Phil Jackson. It's Mike D'Antoni, last seen as coach of the New York Knicks in their days of linsanity. D'Antoni will reportedly earn $12 million for three years, much less than Jackson was asking, according to the LA Times. The basketball Zen master wanted an ownership stake, quote, asking for the moon is how one source put it. ESPN adds Jackson was stunned he didn't get the gig. He won five championships with the Lakers, 11 overall. D'Antoni, however, was idolized by Lakers star Kobe Bryant when Bryant was a kid growing up in Italy and D'Antoni was a player in the Italian League. It was a slam dunk for this weekend's box office hero, bringing us to our daily digit, $87.8 million, the three-day opening box office tally for the new James Bond movie, Skyfall. That's the best North American debut in the franchise's 50-year history. Globally, the film starring Daniel Craig as 007 has raked in $518.6 million since opening overseas on October 26, according to Sony. One of those who forked over her money this weekend? Me. Best Bond ever. And finally, picture capture the flag meets Australian rules rugby, and you may have a sense of a bizarre game of Botashi or knocking down the pole. Played by cadets at Japan's National Defense Academy, four teams compete to see how fast they can lower an opposing team's pole while defending their own from attack. The cadets, quote, upgraded this year's game to include punches and kicks. Neat. Nearly 2,000 spectators witnessed the event, one saying she now realizes she can rely on these cadets for safeguarding her country's future. That is the latest from 3 Times Square this Monday. You can follow us on Twitter at Reuters Insider and check out our Reuters YouTube channel at Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard. This is Reuters.